A blessed afternoon, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We are on the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we lovingly welcome all of you to this fourth day of our novena to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Let us now rise and welcome our Lord Jesus Christ in the person of his minister, Reverend Father Joey Maburang of the Order of the Discalced Carmelites. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. All together, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. 
Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. to God in the highest one heart is one heart is a Dios one
us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The commandments of the Lord are near to us, written on our hearts. We need only to carry them out in the daily events of life. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If only you who would heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord, your God, with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is up in the sky that you should say, it is not up in the sky that you would say, who will go up in the sky to get, who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us of it? that we may carry it out, nor is it across the sea, that you should say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it, that we may carry it out? No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your saving help, O oh God, for 
Christ Jesus is both the image of the invisible God and of the lowly person. By becoming man, he has taken the face of every man and woman. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven, and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. spirit and life, you have the words of everlasting life.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him, and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But the Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more, than what I have given you, I will repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And who is my neighbor? The person who asked this question was a scholar of the law. Therefore, he must have been intelligent. He asked Jesus the question, And who is my neighbor? Not because he did not know who is, who his neighbor was. Rather, he wanted to justify himself. He wanted to make excuses for himself. That was the reason why he asked Jesus. Today's gospel reminds us, brothers and sisters, that our faithfulness to our religious practices, like the priest and the Levite in our gospel today, does not complete our following of Jesus. Religious piety is good. But religious piety is not enough. Our prayer should lead us to good work, according to St. Teresa, to an action, and our action should also lead us back to prayer. The fruit of authentic prayer is good works. The result of prayer, or our intimate relationship with God, is becoming a neighbor to the other. Siguro makapamangkot kita. What happened to the Levite? What happened to the priest? Hindi bala sila git ang perming ara sa sulod sang templo? What happened to their life of prayer? Why is it that when they saw the man na nagakinahanglan, nagakinahanglan sang bulig, Naglikaw git sila sang dalan. What is happening in their life 
of prayer. Because prayer transforms. There is no doubt that to be a disciple is to pray like Jesus. But that is not enough. To be a disciple is also a call to love and serve like Jesus. The Christian disciple is a good neighbor. He does not look for excuses. He sees opportunities to be of service. The Christian neighbor never stops in helping and assisting. He gets involved regardless of who the person is. Jesus in today's gospel invites us to reach out to risk our comfort and become involved. Brothers and sisters, if we look at the life of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we can also see that she also risked her comfort and became involved in the plan of God when she uttered the word or the words, let it be done to me according to your word. Mary saw the opportunity to be of service to God and humanity. But what does Mary really mean when she speaks these words to the angel? We might conclude that Mary is giving permission, God permission to do what he has planned for her. Mary's yes, her fiat, is precisely that the submission of her will to God's will. But it is not simply a surrendering of her spirit to God, but rather her being, her entire being, her body and soul, so that her words express the reality of incarnation. Her words, let it be done to me according to your will or according to your word. Matuman sa akon ang pulong kag ang kagustuhan, the will of the Lord. Let it be done to me was translated into life. That God becomes human through her flesh and blood so that Mary's body expresses the spiritual unity she enjoys with God in carrying the Son, Jesus himself, in her womb. Sometimes kita gani, mahambal kita sang yes, but we really mean no. Sometimes gani, mahimo kita sang commitment or promises, pero asta sa hambal lang. Most of the time, wala agit sa pulong. Wala agit no sa buhat sometimes we also make vows but most of the time hindi gid na siya makita sa aton nga action not with mary mary's very being reminds us that it is not simply our souls that express the presence of god but our bodies as well that what God has created as good from the very beginning of creation remains a tangible manifestation of His love and His abiding presence even today. Brothers and sisters, Mary, who carried Jesus in her womb, is a living example to each of us of what it means to turn our lives over to God. It is not simply a manner of spirit, but a manner of our physical reality as well. Mary's words, let it be done to me, reveal not simply a willingness to go along with God's plan, but a daily, a day-to-day caught -day and conscious emptying of self in which she allows her body to become the very instrument of God's plan of salvation. Mary's self-giving reminds us that it is not simply our souls, it is not simply our spirits that express the presence of God, but also our body 
and our action. That what God has created, good, has to be seen and has to be tangible and made flesh every day. Today, we are also invited to imitate Mary's self-emptying, that we too might conform our wills to God's, to God's will, rather than expecting God to conform to our wills. Today, the scholar of the law in our gospel asked Jesus, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What was written in the law? Nagpamangkot siya liwat. What was written in the law? Anyway, you're a scholar of the law. You are an expert to the law. So, what was written there? Ano gid ang nabalaan mo? Kag ano gid ang na-memorize mo? Di, siyempre, kabalugid ni ang scholar eh. Nagsabat man siya. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Ano gid ang hambal ni Jesus sa iya? Himuon mo na. Sakto gid na. Tumanon mo gid na. These two great commandments are all about self-emptying. We empty ourselves so that God can fill the space in our lives. We must decrease and God must increase. The goal of self-emptying, like Mary did, is union with God. To be so one with God that He can do to me whatever He wants. By making myself more and more and more and more available to His movement. Making myself more and more and more available to His action. To be so available and open that God can do with me what He wants and as He wants not for the specific task I set up for myself but for whatever He wants. St. Therese of the child Jesus said and I quote, I had offered myself to the child Jesus to be His little plaything. I told Him not to treat me like one of those precious toys which children only look at and dare not to touch, but to treat me like a little ball of no value that could be thrown on the ground, kicked about, pierced, left in a corner, and pressed to his heart just as it might please him. In a word, I wish to amuse the Holy Child and to let him play with me as he wish. End of quote. Brothers and sisters, I think we all have had enough experience of what the Lord wants, which always surprises us. In other words, something beyond our expectations, something beyond our grasp, Something beyond our hold. Pwedeng beautiful, pwedeng pleasant, pwedeng painful, and sometimes uncertain, and even dark. Today, Mary invites us to hold on to our faith. Hold on to the church. Hold on to God. When we cannot understand what is happening around us. In our families, in our communities, in our country, or even with ourselves. Like Mary, may we also say, let it be done to me, and learn to trust God amid darkness and uncertainties. Like Mary, may we also learn to empty ourselves of our wills, our agendas, and our plans for the future so that we might give birth to Jesus in our world, that we might allow the light of Christ to illumine a world that is filled with doubts and darkness, that we might become instruments of God's love, radiating the light of Christ for all humanity. Mary, Mother of Carmel, pray for us. Amen.
Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, co-substantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving Father, on the cross, Jesus gave us Mary to be our own mother. Lead us to you as we walk our journey in these uncertain times. May her maternal care and solicitude obtain for us the graces we direly need. For every petition we shall say, May your mother intercede for us, Lord. May your mother intercede for us, Lord. For the church and all, all who shepherd our souls. May they be heralds of truth and visible signs of God's unconditional love and compassion for all peoples, living their lives in solidarity with the poor and the suffering as we lift up the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, we pray. May your mother intercede for us, Lord. For our diocese, our beloved Bishop Buzon, the clergy and the lay, as we embarked on the path of renewal through the synodal process, may the Holy Spirit inspire and guide them to an authentic growth in our walking together towards your desired direction by reaching out to as many and listening to the voice of those in the peripheries, we pray. May your, your mother, mother intercede for us, Lord. For the leaders of all nations, especially the newly elected officials of our country, may they temper the impact of the global economic crisis by their sincere concern and selfless efforts to channel all resources for the common good as they open their hearts to divine light and wisdom, we pray. May your mother intercede for us, Lord. You have made our country Pueblo Amante de Maria. May you renew us in our devotion and filial love to our Blessed Mother, and may she teach us to live in conformity to your will, in steadfast faith, hope, and love, as we carry the burden of our present realities, we pray. May your mother intercede for us, Lord. For all those who suffer the scourge of sickness, war, persecution, grief, loneliness, and poverty, May the Spirit's gift of fortitude sustain them, and accompanied by our Blessed Mother, may they be experience God's boundless mercy and providence, as we especially pray for the people of Ukraine, and an end on the ongoing war, we pray. May your Mother intercede for us, Lord. You called the Order of Carmel to walk the way of our Blessed Father. May they always remain faithful, living in allegiance to Christ, 
and may their unceasing prayers and sacrifices heal the wounded and broken world, we pray. May your mother intercede for us, Lord. May the faithful departed be brought by our blessed mother to the gates of heaven and share in the fullness of eternal joy and glory, we pray. May your mother intercede for us, Lord. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. May your mother intercede for us, Lord. Almighty Father, we turn to you in faith and confidence. Through Our Lady's unfailing intercession, may all our petitions find favor with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord, through Him. The host of angels adores Your Majesty and rejoices in Your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the true fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Patricio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, the Son of Mary. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. For those who are joining our live stream celebration, let us now pray the spiritual communion prayer. O oh my Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you and I desire you to come into my heart. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, O oh, never leave me. May the burning and most sweet power of your love consume me, that I may die for you, who died for love of me. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Vina prayer. All together. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. As you gather us to honor our Blessed Mother, our Lady of Mount Carmel, may your Holy Spirit touch us to pray from deep within our hearts that your healing hand may dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. As we continue our journey in this ongoing pandemic, we pray that you guide the people tasked to find cure for COVID-19 and its variants. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic, to protect our health workers and the afflicted restored to good health, and that those who perished may peacefully rest in the Lord. We are also in a transition of governance in our beloved country. We ask your divine guidance for our national and local leaders, that they may have a more foremost in these hearts of mind and minds the welfare of our people, especially the upliftment of the poor. We also pray for world peace, and may it start from the hearts of all peoples. As a special favor, we ask of you an end to the war in Ukraine and the grace of conversion of hearts to those who wreak havoc and destroy peace. We ask our Blessed Mother to share with us her disposition of loving surrender to seek and do the Father's will. Let it be done to me. With great trust and hope she uttered, Likewise, may we say our yes, having her beside us. Let prayer be the heart of our life and the source of every action. And as we wear the scapular, we express our confidence and trust in the protection of our Blessed Mother from the snares of the evil and any form of darkness and untruth, that we may walk in the path of light and truth and shine with God's own goodness and love in service to all. This we pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us now sing the hymn, Flower of Karma. seated for a while. A blessed Sunday to all. We are on the fourth day of our novena to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and we thank you for joining us on this special day of the Lord, renewing us all with the graces of His resurrection. Salamat give to our dear Sunday chaplain, Father Joey Maburang, OCD, who presided 
at our beautiful celebration of joy and thanksgiving. Doing their part for our Sunday liturgy are our Eucharistic ministers, altar servers, readers, and offerers, and the documentation team for which we thank them. Horizons Choral enhanced our liturgy and worship with their beautiful singing. Let us all give them a round of applause. May these days of our novena anchor us in faith and confidence with God through our communal prayer in loving union with our Blessed Mother. We are faced with a difficult adjustment in these crucial times and prayer is our source of light, strength, and peace. We pray that coming to the Novena Days of Our Lady of Mount Carmel may empower you to respond to the challenges of every day. Carmel, as yours of a faithful remembrance of you all in prayer, interceding for God's providence, good health, guidance, and strength for you and your families. May God bless us all. Please all rise and let us now bless the scapulars. Show us your Lord and mercy. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, Savior of mankind, by your right hand sanctify this scapular, which your servant will devoutly wear for the love of you and your, of your mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel. By her intercession, may, she, may they be protected from the wickedness of the enemy and persevere in your grace until death, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessed scapular and ask the Most Holy Virgin that by her merits it may be worn with no stain of sin and may protect you from all harm and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has been offered. Go and glorify the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Last year, 
or enrolled no, by the uh, scapular of Our Lady, there is no need for you to be enrolled or imposed again. No, once lang na siya, no, and you just you can just change your scapular kung daan nagit siya. Pero there is no need for you to be no enrolled and imposed again. That is the grace that we receive. Pag naghatag ang ginoo, forever gid na siya. Hindi na siya ma-expire. Madamo nga salamat gid.